This is a podcast for Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we spoke to Professor Peter Horby about his research on emerging infectious diseases. Hello Peter. Hello. What are emerging infectious diseases? Well, they're infectious diseases that are either increasing in their, the extent of spread or the number of cases they're causing, or sometimes, but less rarely, uh, more rarely, they're new infections that we've not encountered before. Most often these arise from animals, um, so they're new to the human, human species and uh, often cause you know, rather alarming outbreaks, although they're often limited in size. How common are emerging infectious diseases in the UK and the rest of the world? These aren't esoteric infections, you know, we see them all the time. I think, you know, one of the ones we'll all be aware of in the UK was um, mad cow disease, bovine um, spongiform encephalopathy, which obviously caused a huge impact here. Not a huge number of human cases, but a big impact on the agricultural industry. But if we look globally, they're very common, really. Uh, We see them all the time recurring. You know, people will be familiar with pandemic influenza, which um, re-emerges from animal uh, sources and causes large epidemics. Um, SARS, obviously, people are very aware of that. Um, Avian influenza, and more recently, the Ebola virus outbreak in, uh, in West Africa. Can you tell us about your research? We've learned from the past experience with these uh, emerging infections that we can expect them to come along, but sometimes, well, most of the time, our response to them is pretty inadequate when it comes to research. I think certain areas have improved a lot, you know, um, Certainly the virology now, the response to identifying the pathogen and characterising the pathogen is much better and there are many very good labs around the world who are able to do that. But we've been much less good at the public health response in terms of gathering the data we need to have a a well-calibrated and effective public health response. We still don't know really where SARS came from, where Ebola virus comes from. Most importantly for pretty much all of those, we don't know how to treat them. So what we're trying to do is to change that We can only really do the research on these infections during outbreaks. And traditionally, the way that research has been done is not well suited to doing it during outbreaks. Um, So what we're trying to do is change the way that's done, to change the methodologies, um, to establish networks who are able to conduct both epidemiological, public health and clinical research during epidemics to give us the answers we need during the epidemic so we can have good public policy, good public health response and the best clinical treatment that's available. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five or ten years? With emerging infections, there's um, new technologies being brought on board as in all other areas. And the real advances is to bringing those types of technologies uh, and methods into a new context, into the outbreak context, so that we're collecting not just basic public health information, but we're collecting the data we need to do more advanced mathematical modelling with the mathematical modelling groups, to collect the biological samples we need for the virologists to look at pathogen evolution and also look at um, the difference in the genetics of the pathogens to see how it's spreading, how quickly it's spreading and, and where the source may be, to collect the biological samples from humans so that we can look at the antibody responses and to conduct clinical trials. A good example now is during the Ebola virus outbreak now where we're, we're mobilising you know, clinical research networks so that we can um, try and get some of these therapies which are really at the moment only in the lab into patients in a time frame that we can actually assess their efficacy during this outbreak and maybe make a difference during this outbreak but certainly know that for the next outbreak we have therapeutics that we know that, that work. Why does your research matter and why should we put money into it? Emerging infectious diseases are you know, probably one of the biggest threats to health. Pandemic influenza is number one on the UK list of civil emergencies that is likely to occur. But more broader than that, they have a direct impact on other health problems. So we've seen with Ebola now that the health care system in West Africa is really under a lot of stress. And there are probably as many people dying from other diseases because they're not getting adequate care because of the Ebola outbreak. But even beyond that, the economic impact is massive. You know, SARS is estimated to have cost between 18 and $60 billion to the economies in, in Southeast Asia, um, even though only 800 people died. The Ebola outbreak now in West Africa is estimated to, you know, to probably reduce the GDP of those countries by between 2 and 10%. And they're already 
economies that are, are just struggling to to emerge from area, um, eras of civil war. So this could have a devastating impact on those economies and those populations. So if we can improve the evidence base for the response to these outbreaks, we can improve the public health response and we can improve the clinical management and we can improve the control of these outbreaks, we can actually make a big difference both to the patients but also to the economic impact um, that those outbreaks cause. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Well, I would argue this is a, a classic example of translational medicine because what we're doing is, is directly focused on providing answers in real time that influence policies, both in public health, but also clinical practice. Um, and we're um, doing that by collecting information you know, both on uh, the disease dynamics, so that influences the public health interventions, but also um, on the disease dynamics in patients. Um, and that will impact how patients are treated, um, the diagnostics that are used, um, and the therapies that are given. Thank you very much. Thank you.